What's going on, people? So if you're thinking about buying a new or used Jeep SRT, uh, the WK2 primarily, hopefully some of the questions that you have uh, as a new or first time owner, I'll be able to answer for you here uh, in regards to what are some known issues with the platform. I can't answer any questions uh, regarding the WK1, um, but I can answer a few things that I constantly see pop up online or that people send me directly through the YouTube channel that ask me uh, about reliability, known issues, etc. Uh, you know, what type of fuel to use, etc. like that. So for starters, is it a reliable platform? Yes. In my opinion, yes. I, I love the vehicle, so my answer would be yes. Two, what are some of the known issues with the WK2 Jeep SRT? Well, for starters, the number one biggest complaint I have and the biggest aesthetics issue that I see pop up with everybody is the carbon fiber trim issue. As I am recording this, my carbon fiber trim is peeling again. Now, if you don't know what that means, this is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when your carbon fiber trim starts to peel inside your vehicle, okay? So as you can see, this corner has already come up. Again, this was already replaced. You see how it, you have to push it down. And then I noticed over here, which straight on to the naked eye, you just don't, it, it's hard to see it, right? Watch when I go under here. Look at that. Okay, that's what it looks like when the carbon fiber trim panel starts to come off. And this one's really bad that needs to be tacked down or replaced okay so that's the carbon fiber trim inside this platform uh, I believe it started in 2011 I could I could be wrong but that's the carbon fiber trim and if you have a vehicle and it hasn't peeled yet <laughs> I'm betting that it's going to peel this is the second time for me first time was covered under warranty uh, but as you'll soon find out, dealerships try to not pay for it or they don't want to do it. I had an issue with the dealership not wanting to uh, cover mine. He made up a BS excuse. And then I went to another dealership and they totally fixed it. So, you know, that's that's your best bet. That's the number one issue. Uh, body lines not lining up properly. Uh, that's all aesthetics. Uh, you know, it's not the best quality for the money you're paying. Uh, reliability on the transmission, the eight-speed transmission is amazing. Um, I think it's one of the best transmissions I've ever owned as far as, uh, you know, for a daily driver or even going to the track. Uh, uh, another thing that failed a lot in the community that I noticed is the water pump fails early. Now, that's a maintenance issue. So, replacing a water pump is a maintenance issue. However, Chrysler recognized that there is definitely a problem with ours and now a lot of us have gotten our extended warranties mailed to us uh, seven years now to cover the water pump so if you're buying a uh, 2015 Jeep like this your water pump is now covered up to seven years okay and you'll know when it's about to go uh, you'll start to smell a strong odor of coolant uh, your temperatures will start to spike uh, 221 222 the fan will kick in drop it down and if you start to hear a little bit of rattle, a little bit of like ball bearing type rattle, and you know it's going. And this is what it looks like when it actually fails. I was able to record it, and this is the video of that. All right, so you guys wanna see what a, a water pump looks like when it goes bad? You can hear it, and you can see it right there. Okay, it's leaking. It's getting shot up all over the place. So that was when mine went, and I, I knew it was gonna go to the point where I made an appointment with the dealership on a Friday. I told them on the phone that Monday, I need this appointment. I believe my water pump is going to fail. And Thursday morning, when I went to drive the kids to school, that video is what happened. Uh, it went, took it up for a replacement, and I'm good to go. And I'm covered for seven years uh, of ownership. So that's one of the other big things you'll hear other people complain about. Uh, their calipers peeling. Uh, that happened with mine. Um, the 
uh, bubbling on the OEM spider monkey rims around the center cap. It's more aesthetics than an actual real problem. The quality, in my opinion, could be a little bit better, you know. But if you like the way the vehicle looks, then get it. Uh, now let's talk about gas mileage. This is another big one that pops up, another big question. Uh, how is the gas mileage? Don't buy it if you're thinking about saving uh, or getting great gas mileage. I'm looking at mine right now, 9.3. Now I have a Pro Charger on this, but it was right around 10 in the city because I drive in sport mode because I thought auto mode sucked. Now, if you're considering a vehicle and, you know, gas mileage is even remotely in your mind, then don't buy it. I'm going to tell you right now, don't waste your money because, if, you know, gas mileage sucks. You're going to be going to the gas pumps a lot. And you have to put 91 or above in your tank. It's a high compression engine. The 6.1, the 6.2, the 6.4 all require 91 octane or above. If you can't afford the gas, don't buy the vehicle. I see people ask all the time, can I put 87 octane in the Jeep? And this is my response to that. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Seriously, do not purchase this vehicle with the intent on putting 87 octane in it. And if you don't understand why, please look up why high compression engines require a higher octane rating, okay? It's all about detonation, knock. I'm not gonna sit here and go on a, a complete rant about that, but no, 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 no. Again, this is my answer to that. No! Do not put 87 octane in a Jeep SRT or any SRT. Just don't do it, okay? Um, that's one of my biggest um, pet peeves or gripes is when I see new owners or people coming in to the groups and say, uh, is it okay to put 87 in? Why did you buy the vehicle? And if you're trying to save on, you know, what can I do to you know, get better gas mileage? Buy a Prius, buy a hybrid, buy a vehicle that doesn't suck up gas like a crack whore at a free methamphetamine party. It's the best way I could put it. I mean, because think of it like a, you know, it's going to eat gas, but you're going to get, rather than MPG, okay, miles per gallon, think of it as this, SPG, smiles per gallon. Nothing is funnier than dropping off the kids to school and tearing out of that parking lot, not, you know, real fast, but with the, with the sound that the Hemi puts down, especially with a portal attack on it and looking at all the other dads turn their head and look at it, it hurts a lot of feelings on the road, okay? Especially if you boost them or if you get a track hawk. My recommendation is if you can afford it, get a track hawk. Better platform, better engine, better to build on, okay? Um, but if you're starting out with the SRT, you can still boost this. I'm at 6.28 pounds of pressure at PSI, and I put down 650 rear wheel horsepower in a dyno jet. For comparison, a track hawk puts down around 587, all right? And it's dyno baseline dyno theirs it was a 587 i'm at 596 600 with 93 pump and i'm at 650 with ms 109 so uh, you can boost these on a budget stock internals yes you're going to hear also you'll hear a lot of people with outdated information going all the way back to 2011 2012 when there were a lot of failures people were learning how to tune these beasts they didn't know what they were doing it was a learning curve it was a lot of learning Josh down at HHP will tell you the same thing. It was a learning curve for everybody. But with the technology and the tuning in place and all the good tuners out there like Josh at HHP, Johan, AKA Diablo Tuner, and all the other ones out there who specialize in doing Hemis, uh, listen, it's safe to do it, okay? Now, over a certain level, if you're going that route, you will start breaking things, all right? So that's a whole nother question and a whole nother topic we can get into, um, but just for new buyers and if you're interested in buying it just think, just remember gas mileage sucks you're going to be spending money on premium uh the carbon fiber trim issue body lines quality may not be best i also had an issue with my steering wheel i can show you a picture of that in the corner of your screen the steering wheel actually cut my finger because where it butts up so when you're inspecting a vehicle you're going to buy it look at that part of the steering wheel and see if that part is starting to separate uh, it will cut you. It cut my finger. It was like, it's razor sharp. It's aluminum. 
and it, it like sliced me pretty good so I just used the file to file it down you never see it when you're looking down at your steering wheel it's a non-issue after that that's all I can really think of um, you know I had a uh, I could tell you all the things I had failed with it within the first two years okay the water pump uh, the blower motor went I had one headlight replaced under warranty because the uh, the the DRL ribbon in the actual headlight a little spot turned blue they replaced that the fuel door uh, broke on me and I had to replace the fuel door um, it, when it storms the seal around the wind the windshield itself is a little damaged it's starting to wear the vehicles only in 2015 it's 2018 and sometimes water leaks in um, I've corrected that myself but that's something to look out for I would definitely look around Excuse me, I would definitely look around the window of any used Jeep SRT that you're purchasing or any Jeep WK2 in general and see if the actual uh, rubber around the windshield is starting to go in the corners because if it is, you're going to get leaks. Um, and if you're having a leak now and you're just watching this video, that's the first spot to go check to um, remedy the situation. So I talked about the fuel doors. Ah, another one, another thing that's going to go, and I've had two of them fail on me, door actuators. Your door lock, you know, when you hit the button like this, it's supposed to pop up, and then when you go to hit it, it's supposed to lock. When they fail, they become in inoperable, okay? And I had to use the hard key in my key fob to get in and out of the vehicle. This one failed, and the rear um, passenger failed. And that happened about a year ago. Both of them went almost at the same time. That's something that, you know, you know, it's just, it happens. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So I covered the steering wheel, I covered the door locks, the headlight, the water pump, the fuel door, the blower motor, the carbon fiber trim issue, which is now peeling again, as I spoke about. Um, at this point, if, if the gas also, if at this point you still want to buy one, <laughs> good luck. I love the vehicle, personally. I deal with all the problems. People keep telling me if you have this many problems with it, sell it. Nah, I've had problems with all kinds of cars that I've had. You work through them. Love the way the car looks, and um, I'm going to stick with it for at least another year until I decide to trade it in or sell it. Uh, but that's really it. I can't think of anything else that's coming to mind that's ha happened. So that's all I got for you. If you have any questions for me uh, that I have something I haven't covered, you want to ask me directly, ask me below. I'll try to get right back to you. Uh, subscribe if you want. It helps me out, helps you out, because I do a giveaway every month. I still haven't given anything away for August yet, because it's been a really hectic month. I had a lot of custom work done on the vehicle. But any of you out there that already own Jeeps, uh, whether it's an SRT or not, and I may have missed something, please chime in below so others can get an idea of what to look out for when buying one of these, either new or used. Uh, they're probably going to be looking for a used, low-mileage SRT. Uh, if you're buying new, you know, you're... You should be good to go, although I have read a couple of things with issues with some people. But uh, Oh, and my calipers peeled. The calipers almost forgot the wheels. The Pirellis are garbage, complete garbage. The run flats will go out in 15,000 miles. They're a bumpy ride, and they're not the best at grip. I don't care what anyone else says. You can read all the literature online, all the monsters of grip tests. They never finish first. Your uh, Pilot Sports do, your Continental Extreme Contacts, and even your Toyos are better than the Pirellis. That's my opinion on the Pirellis. Complete garbage. I got rid of them after 15,000 miles, and I won't use the run flats on this vehicle ever again. Uh, the actual Spider Monkey rims, the OEM Spider Monkey rims, there was some uh, bubbling around the center cap. I thought that was pretty crappy and quality-wise. And the, the clear coat on the calipers peeled within six months of ownership. That was another thing that I thought was is ridiculous. I wasn't using any harsh cleaners on the wheel. I was using hot, warm, soapy water, and for those to that to peel so suddenly like that was was um, a shock. So I think I covered everything. Now I don't know. Look down in the comments. I may have to add something. But that's it. Any questions? Shoot me a message below. Subscribe if you want, and most importantly, be safe. And talk to you later. Okay, I'm out.